Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Welcome to Ask Rob and Rob. Thank you for joining us for two more listener questions and two more answers. Those questions coming up in just a sec. But it's so easy, Rob, to send your question our way. It certainly is. We've collected it in all one lovely place for you. If you go to propertyhub.net forward slash ask, you can find our number. You can leave a message directly there. And you can also leave questions for our weekly column in the Sunday Times. What a lovely collection. And you could do it all at propertyhub.net forward slash ask. So if you have a question, make sure you get it in there. Right, let's have a listen to someone who has followed that process to a T. That's Marcus. Hi, Robin Rob. Big fan of the show. Uh, definitely, it's the only one that I actually listen to regularly. So yeah, definitely the best property podcast in the UK, in my opinion. One of the strategies that's been very, very effective for you has been buying desirable properties in good areas that have good capital growth and, of course, come with fewer problems from tenants. Of course, one of the costs that comes with that is a slightly lower yield compared to the cheaper properties, but you'll make that back usually on capital growth. And that's been a great strategy for for many, many years. As a landlord who's seeking to expand my portfolio, I'm curious as to your view on this. Many of those higher end properties now have, because of the cost of credit, become loss making. So for example, my friend's flat, the cost of credit is a thousand pounds a month. The rent is only 800 Would you recommend that landlords who are in that circumstance, whether they already have the property or they're looking at it, should they go into those properties knowing that maybe for a year or two or however long it takes, they will be running at a loss, but hoping that they will perhaps make some capital growth in in the future? Or do you think it might be time for some landlords to start to look at properties that can have a more resilient balance sheet, even during times when interest rates uh, may be higher? So I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, do you think it's time to change or do you think that the old strategy should be continued regardless? Thanks. Marcus, thank you for your question. The answer is no. I don't think you should be going into anything that you know is going to be loss making. It just doesn't make any sense and introduces too much risk. Not to mention the fact that you're going to struggle to find a mortgage lender who would allow you to do that because of the various affordability methods that they like to check. And for this reason, I've got this view which sounds insane and it's semi-insane but bear with me which that is a good thing that mortgage rates have gone back up because if you're buying a property today you can make sure that it stacks up based on today's mortgage rates and today's rent levels and yet of course mortgage rates can go up from where they are now but they're far less likely from where they are now to triple as payments may have done if you're on a particularly good rate from a few years ago Whereas when we're all buying properties and financing them at rates of 2%, you kind of knew at some point rates were going to normalise, but you didn't know when. So that's why your friend has ended up in a position where they're making a loss, as many people will have done. But if you're buying a property now, you can make sure that it works. And there are high-end properties out there that absolutely don't work. And so those you should avoid. But there are also higher-end properties that do work, helped, of course, by the fact that rents have been adjusting upwards so dramatically recently. So that continues to be our strategy. We are still making purchases today that are still high-end, that are based on today's mortgage rates, and still make a profit each month. Maybe not a dramatic one, because that's not what we're in it for, but make something. That doesn't have to be your strategy. There are many different ways of approaching property. And an approach that is far more income focused may well be the one that's right for you. Nothing wrong with that at all. But do definitely go into an investment, having run the numbers and having seen that there is at least some element of monthly profit in there, because safety above all else has got to be the priority. Hopefully that helps, Marcus. Next up, we've got a question in from Harry. Hi, Rob and Rob. I just want to say firstly, thanks for the podcast. It's great to learn about property investing as well as staying on top of the market news. So my question is, I've just started working in London and hopefully I'm looking to buy a property in a few years. And I was wondering if I would like to essentially let one of the rooms out in the property, say it's a two bed, is it possible to do this with a residential mortgage or do you have to kind of have a special buy to let mortgage or lodger's mortgage? And if you can do it on a residential mortgage and you tell your lender, will they kind of insist on slightly increasing the interest rate or how does it work? Harry, a nice, easy one to answer, and I'm sure it's not the reason why I selected your question and Rob got the other one. The answer is you don't need a specialist mortgage. If you've got a home, and let's call it a two-bed property like you suggested, and you want to rent out to a lodger, you don't need a specialist mortgage for that. It's that simple. Now, 
if you expand it further, then it would become a HMO, you know, if you had multiple people living in your home. But just one extra person, one lodger, does not put you in that category. So this is nice and easy. It's nice and straightforward. If you're looking to cover some of your costs with renting a room out, then go ahead, crack on. You don't need to worry. The thing that you may want to look into, though, is your insurance and just making sure your policy covers you if you do have a lodger. It should be fine, but you don't want to go off a should be, particularly when it comes to insurance. So notify them, let them know that you do have a lodger. Hopefully they don't increase your premium and that will then cover you after you've notified them. So the mortgages, you're all good, but insurance, just do a little bit of extra work. Good luck. Thank you for those questions. We'll be back to answer more questions next week and we'll be answering questions in the Sunday Times, of course, on Sunday. But before then, we'll see you for the Property Podcast on Thursday. Until then, have a great week. Bye-bye. 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 